Hello and welcome, Exiles, to my guide for my Rage Life Stacking Hex Blast Mine Saboteur. It's a bit of a mouthful, but that's the build we're working with. Now, I decided to try my best at simplifying the build into a few just important key transition steps for those that want to start the build. I have a level 70 tree for those that want to play the build but don't want to invest a ton. I have a setup that has no clusters, which is pretty similar damage, just a little bit lower on life. And then for those who want to min-max a little bit better, I have an idea where I go for some clusters. And I think it's a little bit stronger version of the build, has a little bit more life. That's kind of the breakdown we're working with here. Um, and then on top of that, I didn't go crazy in depth with my note section. I cover the things that I think are important. I gave you all the steps for crafting every single item I have in this gear set. I didn't min-max past it. If you want to min-max past this gear set here, it's going to be about synth gear. It's going to be a synth wand. It's going to be a gigasynth amulet. It's going to be a gigasynth belt. It's going to be a gigasynth ring. There are min-maxing steps. Technically, I included a step that I didn't go for because glyphic fossils are a little bit pricey right now. So I didn't want to have a version with the glyphic fossil boots because they're a little bit more expensive. Basically, the idea here is you're doing glyphic hollow and fundamental. The idea is to get strength, hollow fossil, and abyssal socket, or sorry, Hulse also abyssal socket and cannot be poisoned. And what you can end up doing is you can get a bleed avoid jewel that has cannot be corrupted. And that allows you to drop this cluster here and get four more passes on your tree where you can get more damage. You can go for a trap and mine cluster with like gorilla tactics, throw speed, you get the pen node, stuff like that. You have other options. It's just a way to get more damage into the build if you want to min max it. But the idea here is giving you the basic steps for every single craft in the build for the gear I have currently on my character. And then to top all that off, I go over a few very important key points. Mandatory items to start the build. A lot of people ask me, what do you need to start this build? The bare bones is Wrath Pith, Dissolution of the Flesh, and Brewer Strength for, and, and some Res Flasks. After that, you can kind of fill in some junk items to begin with, but you're going to want to have to upgrade towards these sorts of crafts, which shouldn't be... Um, Obstructively expensive, they should be doable. Other things I have are people, if they ask me about bandits, my recommendation is use a Lyra until you get some res on your gear. Once you're overcapped for res, drop a Lyra for two passives. That's how I break it down. It's pretty simple. After that, Pantheon's mandatory. You want Aberrath. Dealing with burn ground is one of the things that are annoying to deal with in this build. Aberrath solves that completely. And then I recommend using Brine King for freeze, uh, freeze immunity and chill reduction until you make GG boots. When you're making GG boots, you're doing the prefixes for cannot be chilled movement speed, and then you benchcraft uh, freeze immunity. That solves the Brian King need. And then you can go over to something like Solaris for essentially what is crit immunity to shotguns, a uh, chance to take 50% less damage from an AoE attack, stuff like that. I think Solaris is fantastic once you get the freeze and chill immunity on your boots. After that, I have some basics about dissolution. Essentially, I'm just trying to describe... Hey, your red life, that is your resource for spending. It isn't what you die. What you die by is when enemies hit you, they reserve your life. That's the grayed out portion. And essentially, you need to pay attention to your life being grayed out, not the red life bar being drained down from your wrath pit doing sacrifice. It's a little bit weird. Mentally, it's something you have to adjust to. But once you do, it starts to make sense. And if you play uh, Dissolution a decent amount, it'll start to feel somewhat natural. Initially, it will be a bit awkward. But I would just say... Get a little bit used to this concept. It's really pretty easy to play around once you've played with it some and you get an idea of how it works. Essentially, it's just once you see your life getting reserved, just duck away for a second. It only is a two second window and you get it all back instantly. It's really pretty nice to play around and actually is, it feels like decent recovery if you can play around it correctly. And and I'd say get, get a little bit of a decent feel for it uh, and you might be surprised you like it. Maybe you don't and I can't help that unfortunately, but I think that you might be surprised you like it. After that, Eternal Youth, yes, this keystone is mandatory. Why do we use this? It recharges our life pool. The recharge never stops because we never take damage directly to the red life pool. It's basically our resource generator. While our life ray or our life regen we have from our saboteur ascendancy, the regen on our flask. And if you wanted to put in like a rational doctrine, you get regen there if you wanted to. That is where you get yourself your rage generation for high berserk uptime. After all that, I do not recommend leveling this. I think the build really, any any Wrath Pith style build where your tree is just so heavily just a bunch of life nodes and strength nodes, it just doesn't really function for leveling. So I don't recommend leveling as this character. You could level as a, technically you could level as a Relic of the Pact if you could afford that and level as a life stacker, that would somewhat work. Outside of that though, I would just, just recommend leveling as a normal mind build and then just respec over. Level as the Pyroclast character. Get to level 70 and then make the swap then. That should be doable if you have some basic pieces. 
plus the mandatory pieces listed here. So that's the idea behind these uh, notes here. Just wanted to go over the exact basics, the bare bones, and then I leave it up to you to try to fill in the gaps and adjust it to your own personal taste of how you wanna make the character. Outside of that, I just have the trees for the cluster setup, the no cluster setup, and the level 70 swap setup. As for the build, if you're wondering, I used to be using Grand Spectrums with Life. These things were an investment. I wasn't convinced they were necessarily even the best jewels. They balloon to like nine divines. I don't want people to think the build is not doable because there's nine divine jewels in the build. So I just took those out entirely and I replaced them with three stat jewels, basically prioritizing mind throw speed and life and crit multi. This jewel, I hit strength and percent damage. It's okay. It's not ideal. We want multi over the percent damage and strength. But I settled. I'm not going for perfection here. I'm just going for decent. This jewel we hit multi life and throw speed. That's kind of the three stat we're going for. You can go for a fracture of regular crit multi, crit multi with spells, mind throw speed, life, any of those. And then you can do reforge life or reforge crit, or you can do a reforge speed, or you can do um, the death fossils for if you're trying to target crit multi, stuff like that. You have different options. Just try any of those and you'll be fine. Going for three stat jewels is what I did. I This one I was doing Reforge Life. I hit some okay res. I said, you know what? That allows me to drop a Lyra. I will take this res and that'll give me two more passes into my build. Sure, that sounds fantastic. And then over here we have so crit multi, crit multi. I'm like, that's good enough. No throw speed, but crit multi, crit multi is good. Another three stat, my throw speed, crit multi. The idea is basically to showcase you don't need the Grand Spectrums. I was only using those just because... I thought they were a decent investment at the time. They seemed completely underpriced when I bought them. They bloomed uh, like eight divines, and I'm not going to recommend them. I think they're decent, but ultimately, honestly, if I was going to say, would I rather have this three stat jewel or a jewel that has 15% life? I would rather have this three stat jewel. You got to ask yourself, would you rather spend one passive point for 8% life or one passive point for 7% throw speed and 15 crit multi. I'd rather have the throw speed and crit multi. We have a ton of life right now. We're over capped on crit. We don't really need more life scaling for the crit. It just gives us a bit more percent damage. We might as well get the more valuable damage, which is throw speed, which is a huge damage increase, and multi, which is also another huge damage increase. We don't have a lot of multi in the build. We don't have a lot of throw speed in the build. So this is cheaper and will work great. As for tattoos in the build, I basically, every single int node you can get rid of, every single dex node you can afford to replace, go ahead and replace those up until you hit the int requirement of your wand and the dex requirement of your jewels. Uh, but 2% life, putting that wherever you can is fantastic. And then I also recommend Matata. This loyalty tattoo is essentially a fail safe for flash charge generation. The way it works in my mind is normally our flask would last something like 80, 90, 100 seconds, whatever it is. And they're not going, I'm not going for perfect uptime. I'm going for practical uptime. Basically, while I'm mapping, while I'm doing a content, while I'm fighting bosses, it will never end. But if I go AFK for three minutes, my flask would eventually run out. The idea is with Matata, this gives us a fail safe where if our flasks are going down, going down, going down, every time at that 80 second cooldown mark, Matata summons himself and he gives you five charges per three seconds, I think for 12 seconds. So he gives you like 20 charges over the course of 12 seconds, which will give you a much longer time you can sustain those flasks. So that's the idea behind Matata. Uh, there are other decent loyalty tattoos. Honestly, there's a lot of cool benefits. You can check out one ones makes sense, but Matata, I think made sense for this build in my opinion. After that, the last tattoo we have, which is a bit of an expensive one, Honored Tattoo of the Wise. This is just plus one for Hex Blast. Great little damage multiplier, great node to pick up, can recommend. So that is the idea behind the tree. That's the idea behind the build. We are a life stacking saboteur using Wrath Pith for sustain. We're using uh, Calm Spirit to take our large life pool with a bunch of regen from our ascendancy in order to generate rage to have high berserk uptime, which is a defensive and movement ability along with it gives us a little bit of damage with the all quality and then on top of all of that we mix in a little bit of eternal youth to sustain our life pool blood magic to make our mind reservation or our mana cost just not an issue not think about it and then after all of that we are targeting specifically fire res or cold res you can either do flammability which i like because then you can tag in something like combustion in your build for another minus 10 or you could do frostbite if uh, you prefer that for whatever reason, that works too, which allows you to get, uh, basically you just wanna make sure you're targeting either cold or fire res. I think I've been told there's something ish, there's some issue with bug conductivity, I don't know. Something with uh, basically your LE weakness might overwrite your conductivity and it might mess up having both curses apply at the same time for X-Blast. I'm not sure, you can look into that. But point is, 
we are using those curses with an additional curse anoint for both flammability or frost boy always combined with la weakness on hit and the reason for both a blasphemy and a curse on hit is because the blasphemy applies to the enemy before you hit them which means when you're mapping every single time you first hit the enemy you'll get that big aoe explosion you'll clear the entire pack and you'll be happy if you hit the enemy and you don't have blasphemy it'll just give a one little laser beam which doesn't clear the pack it'll curse the enemy and then you have to hit that enemy a second time to then get the explosion if you kill the enemy in one hit well you get a laser beam and nothing you get a laser beam and nothing and if you have a bunch of little enemies you're one hitting it, it completely messes up your clear so that's why you need blasphemy as for why you need curse on hit blasphemy has a tick rate where it applies the curse slower than you're hitting the enemy with your hex blast so for example i would have blasphemy for the first hit with the explosion but the second hit that comes in blasphemy won't have reapplied the curse yet and the curse on hit the way it works is blast uh hex blast hits the enemy it consumes the curse it deals 100 percent more damage and then the curse on hit is applied after the fact and so that curse is there for the next hit that comes in and it chains like that so that's the reason why you need curse on hit and blasphemy they're both very important for the build you don't want to go for one or the other you want to have both um i recommend eventually getting la weakness on hit gloves that's the min max version but the non min max version which i was playing for about 90 percent of my play time with this character and i was still crushing 83 sanctums was just having an la weakness on hit ring which i eventually replaced with this ring here which has a little bit of res some strength some life and percent strength for a little bit more scaling so now that we went through all of that, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a showcase of Uber Maven and Uber Cortex. Cortex will give you a little bit of an idea of what some mapping content comes, uh, comes like, and Maven will give you an idea of what it looks like to do a, a Uber level content with this character. Um, this character, in my opinion, can do pretty much all content. The only thing I haven't tested uh, is simulacrum and that might be enough random little damage hits random little leftover damage that simulacrum might not be fun on a dissolution build my theory is i probably could do it but it may not be fun that's my guess i don't like simulacrum i don't care for it it's gray it's boring it's unfun i don't like it as content but it's good it's good currency farming you're gonna have to test out for yourself my guess is this build would be that'd be one of the things i think it would struggle with the other thing this build is not good is lab traps dissolution and lab traps just don't agree lab traps scale with your hp so they deal the same amount of damage if you're a 1k life build or if you're a 15k life build in terms of a percentage if you're a 1k life build maybe it deals half your life per second if you're a 15k build it deals half your life per second so that's why traps are bad and dissolution is a little bit awkward where you can't just press your life last to get through the traps you know like that sort of thing so anyways after all that, let's get into this. We, this is a Maven Uber Cortex with five mods. Uh, so should be potentially the hardest version of Cortex. And then after that, we will do an Uber Maven. For context, I did all Ubers yesterday and I died only twice to Uber Eater, basically, because I misplayed. I was I thought I was way off screen of his big slam attack and he just barely hit my pinky toe and killed me. And then after that, I misplayed one of the laser ball phases, which is a little bit awkward with dissolution because if you need to dash into that constant beam of damage and stay in there for a sustained amount of time, he will take you down as you cannot go for two seconds of not taking damage to get your life back. As for the mods we got, we got more magic monsters, monster damage, uh, the normal, they take less damage, Ellie res, which is very bad actually, less curse effect, which is also very bad. So this will get a little bit interesting. I think what I might do, honestly, uh, this is just all this is just kind of I'm free balling here a little bit. This is a bit of a risk, I guess. But you know what? Having 80 all res sounds like not fun to me. I think I am going to test a little theory that I have with doing a flip res. I think this will work out for me. I don't know it will work out for me, but I'm going to try flip res here. I think that's what I'm going to try. It might be stupid, but the idea is if they're going to have completely way over cap res, I need some of my hits to deal damage. So we're going to flip the res and see how that turns out for us. Um, I think this is a maybe a way to deal with uh, a mod like this. It's a very bad mod. Less curse effect makes our curses useless. Um, and then having 80 plus all res means we are going to have a bad time more or less. We're going to have a bad time. So. We're going to try doing this to sort of counteract this crazy res mod we got here. And I'm realizing now I need to make my filter a bit more strict. This shows a lot of stuff that I don't really care about right now. I'm not in the phase of wanting to pick up uh, random bases. So anyways, this will be interesting. 
We have mods that all basically brick our res. I'm not con I'm not convinced this will go well. We also have monster damage, so some very bad mods. Uh, we may have made a mistake, but we're doing it anyways because this is just part of the video. We might just die. We might just die a couple times. We will see. Whenever you're letting bosses spawn in. Okay, looks like we're okay. So even though they have giga damage mod or giga defense mods here, uh, doing the flip res curse I think is really paid off. And then whenever you start these fights, you can, you want to have your berserk with good uptime. And you also want to um, pressure withering step, step when it's possible. Finished off those guys, should be okay. Definitely not ideal to have the, um, the res there, but it seems like we're doing okay. And the reason for Withering Step is basically just to apply an initial stack of like 11 Withers with the all quality with Enhance, it works out pretty good. And then the reason for Berserk is, of course, the less damage taken than a normal multiplier. Just kind of pay attention to it when you do run out of Berserk to reproc it. I don't have in this build, but I actually would end up recommending it for quality of life is Rational Doctrine for a big 5%, no, actually 6% regen because we have 25% conquer on effect and another 60% curse reduction. Really would recommend it. I didn't do it because it's a, you know, it's a nine divine jewel. It's a little bit expensive. It takes down your damage a little bit, but I think it's, I think it's well worth it. This phase, I think you're supposed to take all the things, but that was. Hopefully, we get our life back before he does the thing. I think we maybe played that correctly. Yeah, the amount of AoE that guy has is, I believe, based on how many balls get to him in terms of like how far his AoE comes. So if you've ever wondered, hey man, that feels inconsistent for how far his little explosion's hitting, it's because if you don't do, and this is something I didn't know for a while now. Something I learned recently in terms of how his phase works. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yes, oh, that was really stupid. So I walked back into that, which was not smart at all. A little bit embarrassing. I'm going to pretend you guys didn't see me do that on Uber Cortex. Um, this is good, though. This is good. We rolled the high, uh, the high res map because it gives you the idea of what this fight looks like if you were to do it with a really, really bad tank mod. He's doing his little phase thing, and I'm about to run out of my grace period. I don't know where he's shooting it, but... Try to finish him off real quick before he kills me. I'll finish off the other one. Now, if this guy didn't roll those damage mods when we did Uber Cortex yesterday, you can watch the Twitch VOD. We basically killed them before they did one attack. Them getting both less curse effect and 80 roll all res was... It wasn't something I was expecting to have to deal with, and... Uh, it definitely makes the fight um, quite a bit more uh, dangerous to get double tank bomb mods like that. I probably shouldn't have died the one time if I played it a little bit better, you know, yada, yada, yada. Now let's go ahead and we'll do a Maven. And it should give you some context for how much our damage was getting screwed. Uh, if you can see the difference in damage we deal to Maven versus the Cortex we just did. Uh, but it should be... I would think fairly apparent in in the difference i don't recommend the flip res mod normally but in the context of that all res map i rolled i think if you want to like okay that's super bad for our damage but a way to play around it is doing this basically to deal with it and i think that i think it did exactly what we needed it to do uh i think it worked <laughs> anyways let's go ahead and do a maven's writ and we do have this ubered right here just to give you a little showcase of what it looks like doing a uber maven on this character this character isn't just for uber bossing. It's not just for Sanctum. You can run maps. It will auto target everything, blow them up. It super feels good. You don't have to think much. Recommend trying it out. If uh, if you're curious about this character, I can strongly recommend it. I think this is a very strong character and I've enjoyed it quite a bit. Right, let's go ahead and finish off this map. Wither totems, we only do it for bossing, just for the wither. Otherwise, I don't really bother about it. Eventually. Eventually, if you get really high end. Oh wait, is she not dead yet? 
Eventually, if you get really high end, um, you can go for Balance of Terror Wither and you don't need the Wither Jewels anymore. That would be a really good uh, upgrade, so to speak. Um, in Uber, maybe we should be able to pretty much instantly phase every single time. Shouldn't be much of an issue there. Um, that's what we're going for. Just instantly phase her and then get through the phase. Left, right, stop. Okay. Do this, throw a couple mines, set up my wither totems, blow it up. Kill her instantly, and then we're gonna keep basically shield charging around and then put the ground effect out of the arena. Ground effect is very bad for dissolution build. You don't want to deal with D gens, it's just not not really what we're interested in dealing with. Um we'll berserk whenever we see it come up or the extra damage, then instantly phase. Oh, I thought we were about to get thought we were about to get a skip without her doing the phase. I'm gonna be realistic here. I don't think I'm gonna have the ability to run around it enough to um to dodge like I could have maybe tried to run around enough to not have that be on the arena, but I didn't want to mess up the brain phase. Like if I wasn't watching it carefully, like there's there's a lot of room for error there that I just don't want to take the risk on. Um, we'll go ahead and finish off this brain, and then hopefully I don't run into lasers. I am really good at running into these lasers. If I run into the laser, that deactivates our life recharge from Eternal Youth. So for 10 seconds, I can't cast the skill. And we just have to play around that. So top, top left, top left. Scurry, okay, so scurry. I think this is like the easiest possible. Take this. But if she hits you with that laser, that would disable my recharge, but not really an issue. And that's what it looks like doing an Uber Mall. Ooh! Voidnip, that's, that's actually the gem we're using on our character. As for Voidnip, this isn't something you use until after you swap from Gold to Sandstorm, which I have in the notes section, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, that's a look at my Hex Blast, Life Stacking, Rage Enjoying, Berserk, Saboteur. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. As always, thanks for watching Exiles. And uh, I'm going to start working on my next build. Hopefully this is an enjoyable build for you guys. If you were following along with as I did to Pyre class to swap to Hex Blast and you're playing the build, hopefully... It does well for you on the league. You enjoy some Sanctum, enjoy some bossing, enjoy some mapping, whatever it is. Have fun. And uh, until next time, we're going to be working on a new build. Anyways, take care, Exiles, and peace out.